Um, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Data Scientist podcast. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Yasir Kayam, who is a project manager consultant, and uh, he's also a founder uh, of a company in the blockchain space. Um, welcome, Yasir. Hi, hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, thanks for being here. So we're going to have a very interesting conversation around the uh, blockchain and AI. Um, Yasir, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, first time on a podcast, and, and a great what a great podcast space to you know break your virginity podcast virginity on, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, my name is Yasser, and uh, I've been in blockchain space for a couple of three years. Um, I did my blockchain strategy program with, at Oxford, and um, you know uh, some some good education material over there, and met some great, wonderful, clever people. And uh, that was the start of my uh, blockchain journey. And ever since I've been researching into the technical side of things, keeping up with the, you know, the technology that's advanced so much from, you know, where it was a few years ago. Um, and uh, I decided that, you know, I can leverage that technology on a, on a real life scenario that was close to me, close to us as co-founders. And uh, we launched a product uh, around that. So, uh, so yeah, and it's called Quick Trust. So, um, so that's, that's about me in a nutshell. Great. So, as you know, the blockchain is also a passion of mine. Uh, I'm mostly active in the area of tokenomics, but also a few other things like consensus algorithms, usually the more algorithm stuff. And when I'm, when I'm talking about blockchain with other people, um, one of the things I like to ask them is, uh, what do you actually find um, uh, interesting about blockchain? You know, for some people, uh, it's because they think they're going to become Bitcoin millionaires. And maybe some people actually did for other people. It's, they like the whole decentralized uh, aspect. Some other people might, might just be, you know, math nerds and they just uh, like cryptography. So what, what, what's in it for you? Okay. So that's a really good question because uh, when I initially started in the, in the blockchain space, it was to become a blockchain millionaire. Uh, so unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that didn't happen. And, uh, <laughs> just, just like the 90% of people, unfortunately, that didn't happen. So um, I, I sort of uh, started looking into technology um, and, uh, you know, started, uh, you know, understanding a little bit what blockchain can or can't do, what it's capable of. Um, for me, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, mm -hmm. Blockchain is an immutable, immutable database, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and that's, to me, that's, that's blockchain, right? And uh, people can transact on it. There is, there is no, uh, you know, from a, from a transparency point of view, it's brilliant. Uh, you can share information on it uh, with, with people without, with, with the knowledge that it cannot be tampered with, mm -hmm. okay? And, and that's exactly what we did. That's exactly what we're doing with Quick Trust. We are leveraging the fact that once a document is signed for and recorded onto the blockchain, you can, you can share it with people, with external people outside, right? And uh, that they, they, they can't be tampered with. And there's, there's a proof there within, within the blockchain that you know, when it was uploaded, how it was uploaded. Uh, we've done some clever things around it for, for, for people to, to give them a good visual, uh, sort of a, 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 a visual um, aspect. So all for, to look at, the, look at documents and, and the data is all correct and kosher. So uh, like we have a traffic light system, we have, you know, record, record IP, date and time met so that people have a certificate for each of the documents. So that's for me, that, that, is, that is blockchain, um, you know, and, and the use case of blockchain. Yeah, thank you. I think that's a very good overview. And uh, hopefully now you should be able to hear me more clearly because while you were talking, I switched microphones. <laughs> Those who are actually seeing the video might find this a bit funny. Uh, but essentially what, what you're describing, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, you think that one of the um, most exciting aspects of blockchain is that it makes it easier um, to go through a due diligence process or to audit um, a trail of documents or events or facts or, or whatever. Is this correct? That, that is that is exactly. I think I think those are the exact words. I think. Uh, are you are you by any chance on my website? Uh, no, actually, I was because not. that's the, that's exactly how we described it on our website. That it's a it's a it's a, a new generation due diligence platform, um, <laughs> okay. and 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 that, that and that's exactly what it is for, for us. You know, I mean, uh, a blockchain can be used in 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 a, in a multiple multiple ways. We've seen a cryptocurrency is one of the applications of it. Um, NFT, which is the buzzword, is a, another application of it. 
Mm -hmm. um, I was speaking to a project, uh, you know, recently, uh, and they are AI based project, and a really, really brilliant guys working in the, you know, in the trucking sector, and mm -hmm. they want to leverage the the security feature of of blockchain yeah. with with AI. So, so you know, uh, th there is a tech to be built on. How you see it, how you see it fit, how you want to leverage the technology is is open for for people to to come and you know leverage that technology and that's the beauty of blockchain for me that's yes. the beauty of blockchain yes correct do you are you also integrating with ai or is it pure blockchain so so uh, the the ai part of it is is a, at the next stage um you know reviewing of documentation to see what documents uploaded and what it looks like um you know ip is another thing that that we are starting to look at now we have an expert ip expert uh, dr ace on the on the team who is uh, who's done a lot of research on the ip side you know in germany um and also you know works with wiper which is the world intellectual property organization so we have we have him on board so we look starting to look in on that front as well um and also uh you know uh just by uh onboarding when you onboard people you know uh, uh using ai to recognize who's coming onto your platform and if they're the right people and 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 authorizing authorizing the 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 access to the data Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. I want to ask you something about like uh, building this blockchain platform, creating a blockchain company. So as you might know, uh, many of the people uh, following this podcast or also reading the articles on the data scientist, uh, they're people who want to create their own companies. They're people uh, interested in entrepreneurship. And uh, quite often, many of people, many people who want to start a new company in technology, they don't have technical skills themselves. Themselves. Um, so uh, how easy did you find it to set up this team, come up with, with this idea, um, go from nothing to basically having a functioning product in the blockchain space? And if, is there any advice you could give to someone who really wants to get involved in, in this space? They really want to create a new company, but they just feel a bit lost. Um, I think I think uh, I'll give a philosophical answer. The, the answer the, to, that, to that is hard work. And, and perseverance basically right um and as far as the the, the space is concerned um the the space is actually quite busy at the moment and it's very difficult to find good uh developers good team of developers to to deliver a product um we were lucky we we partnered with uh it fusion uh, who are based out in in, in in pakistan and and what they do is that they're, they're a big uh sort of a design firm and they have sort of different expertise that that we required for, for our for our uh, development of our, for our product and we did that we reached out to them um uh you know I'm, uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't my idea I wasn't alone in this process um you know uh, Simon is the co-founder he's one of the first co-founders of, of quick uh we have Hassam who's uh you know and Nick who did all the uh, all the designs and made it look what it looks like um and then and then you know there, there's me and and we have Dr. Ways, who's working on it as well, and then we have we have a great CTO um, um, in in uh, in Moise. So, so you know the whole team came together, uh, and and you know we've been working on it for 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 the best part of eight ten months. You know, uh, working hard, chipping away at it, and it, it's not been easy. It's been difficult. It's, there, there's been ups and downs, um, but uh, th this this week is a special week for me and and for all of us at Quicktrust because we launched our product today. Uh, it's, it's, oh, congratulations! Uh, thank you, thank you. So we, we launched it today, and um, we are going to, into user testing phase, which is a small group of people, including lawyers, accountants, you know, RP users. Um, some of the uh, incubators are, are using it as well, you know. Uh, so so that, that is, is the first sort of litmus test of our product, and and you know, uh, you know, what it'll do and how it'll change the world. Okay, that, that, that's great to hear. Congratulations, guys. And um, let's also get a bit technical, right? So mm -hmm. there, are, there are some people who are listening to this podcast and they want to create their own products. There are also some people who are listening to this podcast and actually have technical skills. Uh, so what technologies did you use to develop this platform? And like, what's your opinion on those technologies? Why did you use them? Okay, so so we started looking at uh, a couple of three. Uh, I mean, there are loads of platforms out there. You know, yeah. uh, there's there's so many platforms, and, and you can choose whichever one you think is is you think is is the best. Uh, for us, we wanted it to be an enterprise solution. We wanted it to be uh, to be secure, uh, to be to be transactional speeds, to be you know the right speeds of 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 that regarding to the blockchain, 
and uh, you know a secure environment for the users and, and the data that's contained within it. Um, so we looked at Ethereum blockchain, we looked at EOS, uh, and then we looked at uh, IBM's Hyperledger. Um, and um, we started off do, uh, looking at Ethereum and started building on Ethereum, and then and then we start looking at the transaction costs on Ethereum on on, on the testnet, and we were like, they're not good. No, they're not yeah. good. I mean, I'm involved in NFTs as well, and uh, it's uh, it's bad right now. <laughs> it's because of it, DeFi, it, I think. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And 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 imagine imagine this when it was, uh, you know, when we started, Ethereum was you know under thousand dollars. It was, yeah. you know, it was, it was, it was that dip that we, you know, we sort of like started developing the product, and uh, it was still like too high. It was like five, six dollars per transaction, and you think, well, if, if you're uploading a document on there yeah. or a file or a movie file, ah, oh, that's gonna kill the users. And and how, how do we yeah. how do we claw that yeah. cost back? Yes, we want to use blockchain technology, but how do you claw that back? And then we had we had EOS, and we had some, you know, some, something uh, some discussions around EOS, and then we we settled on uh, Hyperledger. One because they were doing a, a lot of R and D in in blockchain space a, a year and a half ago, year two years ago. Um, they were partnering with with, with lots of uh, you know companies, organizations on logistics side of things, in universities and everything else. And we thought that was for us from a security point of view, from a transactional point of view, and from a speed point of view, that was the the best fit for us. Now that may not be a good fit for AM of the project. They might say you know Cosmos is is better or uh, Binance chain is 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 better, or if you're crazy enough, you might say Ethereum is you know uh, is 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 the best you know blockchain. Um, so some people are building on on uh, uh, you know Bitcoin's blockchain. You know they have a little layer two solution on Bitcoin blockchain and building on that. So it all depends on you know what product you're building, how you're building it, and uh, you know how you approach it. Yep, that, that makes sense. And I think uh, one of the challenges now with the blockchain space is that there are many options out there and um, it's not very easy to say, yeah, this is the best option uh, for various reasons. One of which, in my opinion, being that um, it was still relatively early days in the blockchain space, like things are more mature, but um, we're not talking about it. It's not like a technology that's been around for 30 years or something, right? So there are many, many moving parts. And imagine, uh, let's say that you had started using Ethereum and then now the gas fees have exploded and you're basically trapped with this choice and you're like, oh, what, what, what can we do? It's one, of the, it's one of the challenges that companies in this area have to, have to navigate. Uh, so I think that was pretty well said. It's, it's, very, it's very interesting to hear about the experiences of, uh, of, of a company that's basically that's built on blockchain from the ground up. And uh, talking about the company, I'm not, I'm not sure you, the, um, you, you shared the URL. I mean, how can people learn, uh, learn more about you? Okay, so um, the the company is called Quick Trust, and uh, the the how we have named it is K W I K T R U S T. So if you if you Google quicktrust.com, um, you know you should you should be able to see everything that we have on there. Um, you can you can create an account on that. You can you can sort of start using it and playing with it. Uh, it's it's at the moment it's free because it's in testing phase uh, for next couple of weeks. And then once we once we go through the next cycle, we'll start um, you know implementing paywalls and KYCs and AML and all and all of that as and when we sort of like require it mm -hmm. going forward. So that's quick trust K W I K T R U S D. Thanks. So that that's very interesting. If anyone is interested in uh, in quick trust, uh, this blockchain solution for due diligence, uh, make sure to to check out the URL. I'll also make sure for anyone who's listening to add this URL to the description of this episode, whether it's YouTube or it's my web page, so you can directly go there. And uh, yeah, I think that was pretty much uh, it for today. I don't know whether you have any final words yet, sir, before we we finish this uh, this episode. So, so uh, uh, yeah, no, I would like to thank you for inviting me on, on, on this. Uh, and I was listening to you, some of your other uh, other uh, podcasts, and it was they were really informative podcasts. And I was quite intrigued. The, the one that you uploaded yesterday, uh, um, I forget the name of the chap, and he was from oh, Data Authentic. Yosef Yakura. That's it. That's it. Auditing really, really, supply chain. Yeah. Yeah, th that was really, really good, good podcast, you know, and, and I got to learn a lot from it. And he, uh, what, what sort of, uh, uh, you know, it, on, on that that caught my attention was the fact that uh, the the data authentication and how do you sort of prove that authentic, the data is authentic? Mm -hmm. 
Now, in a very small, tiny way, we are sort of playing a part in, in that piece, because uh, what happens is that when you when you have AIs, when you have oracles, they need to know that the data is authentic and anything that you log on to the blockchain, you need to make sure it's authentic. So yeah, what we yeah. are doing is we have a two way authentication. Mm -hmm. So the person who uploads the, uploads the information onto QuickPlus platform is certifying it that it's true information. Mm -hmm. And the person who is authenticating it or validating the information uh -huh. Is also confirming that this information is true information. So within our QuickTrust ecosystem, the information contained mm. is validated, and 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 it's 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 uh, by by two parties, you know, it's cross checked. Yeah. So 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 I think I think it, uh, good technology, good use case, and I was glad to uh, you know uh, listen to that that and and thought to myself, yeah, okay, so what we have built is not something that is that has no use case out there. Yeah, <laughs> product that people will use, and there is a need and requirement for it. Uh, so, so yeah, so that that'll be. I think I think well done on that, and thank you for bringing that to us. Well, yeah, and thanks for sharing your thoughts and experiences with with our audience. Um, and uh, good luck on the platform. So exciting days. So I hope that in one year from now you've actually achieved your goal of becoming a blockchain millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, what I'll do is I'll mark this in my calendar for a year and then we'll, yes, we'll exactly. run a podcast and, and then take it from there. Yeah, so the next podcast is going to be one year from now and it's going to be, you know, blockchain uh, from nothing to millions, basically, something <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, no, if, if people use our product, if people are happy with it and if people give us feedback, uh, you know, uh, via channel there, we have a Telegram uh, set up as well so people can post their questions and uh, on, on there, if you go onto the website, there's a, uh, you know, little Telegram thing. Uh, yeah, feel free to get in touch with me or, or, or the team and then and we'll be more than happy to help you guys. Great. Thank you, Yasir. And uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, if you want to uh, view or hear or see more content around data science and blockchain, make sure to visit the datascientist.com. So this was Stelios from the Data Scientist, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.